Hello everybody, welcome back to another True Potential Do More With Your Money podcast. It's episode 171 today and we've been rifling through the post bag. We've been having a look at some of the questions and the queries you've been sending in, especially in Neil, who gets a lot of mail, I've noticed, don't you Neil? You get a lot, a lot in your post bag each week. You're one of I the do, Peter, yes. Popular people. Yes. It's not always, so. And it's not always questions, is it? It's not always... Requests. Absolutely, yes, requests. Yeah. Songs, have you got a favourite? Uh, well, I am actually going to see Sam Fender tonight, so... Oh, yeah. Oh, it didn't yeah. take you long to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get into some of this. Not Sam Fender. Not going to talk about him just yet. We might touch on that a little bit later on, possibly. Uh, but we're going to get into some of the questions you have been sending in, and that's why we've assembled a all-star crew for this week's podcast. Uh, Neil's in the house, as I mentioned. We've got George and Luke as well. Uh, just for our audience, we get, you know, we're getting lots of new viewers each week on the podcast, so it's worth just saying, I know you're regulars, but for anyone who hasn't met you before... What is it that you do at True Potential, Neil? So I'm head of the central advice team, which basically look after our 60,000 plus clients mm. um, who are based it here. Uh, we have staff obviously based at um, head office um, who give clients advice and anything really uh, that they want to ring up with. Um, we've got a big, strong customer care team as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, get a lot of get a lot of queries into that team and always busy. Are you the boss? Uh, I'm one. I'm a boss of the advisors. So Rebecca Wright runs the customer care staff. Yeah. So yes, that. Yeah. And Luke's in your team, is that right? One, everyone. Yeah. Well, I'm one of the senior financial advisors working with clients yeah. on some of our more complex issues. Uh, so yeah, we help clients answer their their advice issues on uh, maybe some more complex areas. So yeah. So cool. you're you're a fixer, problem solver. Yes, that's. Someone's correct. got a question. Yeah. to come to come to Luke. We do, and we'll sort yeah. it out. Yeah. In good, in good time. Yeah. And we all know George. George, we'll see you on Morning Markets. We'll see you on the podcast regularly. But for anyone who's never met you, tell us uh, what you do. So George Bell, I'm one of the portfolio managers here at True Potential. So one of three. I've got my um, colleagues, Chris and Raj, who I'm sure everybody's familiar with on yeah. Morning Markets and on the podcast. So we manage 10 multi-asset portfolios for different risk profiles. Um, we are supported by a team of fantastic analysts here at head office. And we work with some of the biggest investment houses in the world to mm-hmm. build those investment portfolios. So we manage the allocation to the managers on a day-to-day basis to ensure that we're positioned for our long-term investment outlook for clients. Mm-hmm. So you two look after the clients and you look after their money? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Understood. All right. Um, now, in the last few weeks, uh, or even last month, quite a few of you are on the road speaking to financial advisors across the country. It's worth saying at the outset, by the way, we... True Potential as a company, we work with about one in every five uh, financial advisors in the UK. So about 20% of the advisor market in the UK yeah. uh, works with True Potential. So we're a big outfit. If you've got a financial advisor, which we hope you do, um, it's a good chance they're, 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 they're working very closely with us. And you've, a few of you have been out on the road speaking to them in the, in the, in the last few weeks. <coughs> what are the sort of common uh, questions that you're getting from advisors? Because, of course, they'll be the common questions that their clients are asking them. So was there, was there any particular questions that you were getting when you were out on the road from advisors or, or maybe even just when they've been ringing in, Neil? Um, I, think, I think common questions from advisors are typically around, um, as you know, in the last couple of years, we've, we've seen a pretty volatile market and um, it's an understanding of how the portfolios work. A lot of questions around, um, you know, the decisions that are made, being made in the portfolios by the likes of George and, mm-hmm. and everybody that works for True Potential Investments. Um, and, you know, you, you may have seen on the on the in the news and on the TV, a lot of clients who obviously relate to this to advisors, they have a lot of questions about certain world events. Um, So, you know, like the war in Russia and uh, sorry, in Ukraine um, (coughs) and also um, high inflation and maybe the budget talks and stuff like that. So those questions come from clients to advisors. And if the advisors (coughs) don't know, they sort of, you know, ask us at head office Mm -hmm. because we run the funds Mm -hmm. and that's where the likes of George um, and his team come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and is that the same for you? Yeah, of course. Obviously, me and Neil deal with clients direct. And a common question I get, which is a good question actually, is so a lot of clients now they might see the headlines of the FTSE's gained, mm-hmm. uh, say one percent a day or, or lost, etc. And a lot of clients come to me and Neil and, and they ask questions such as why is my portfolio maybe not done the same on that day? Mm-hmm. And, and the answer really is it, it relates back to the way that the portfolios are, are worked, and we're not trying yeah. to follow one individual fund. Yeah. If you look at the the Standard and Poor's five hundred last year, George, I think that lost about twenty percent from January to December, and, and we're really trying to manage that risk. We're trying to create long-term mm-hmm. gains. We're not mm-hmm. trying to get crazy growth in one day, yeah. one week yeah. or one month. 
we're trying to get that long term compound investment growth. So look at it's quite common for people to, to, to check the news and see this this might have been a, a gain in one day and why is my portfolio not necessarily re reflected that in the short term. Mm -hmm. But the portfolio managers are obviously working really hard to make sure that we're getting that long term growth, invest yeah. in multi asset funds, equities, bonds, cash yeah. and, and all the different assets to, to capture that growth but also manage the risk as well. And it's worth pointing out as well, uh, you know, a good point what Luke's just said. Um each individual client has a different risk mm -hmm. um, and their risk <coughs> depends on what their makeup of their portfolio is. Um, and it's, you know, um, it, it's like, like Luke said, the, the portfolios are, are managed to, 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 to manage that volatility, if yeah. you like, and to take the heat out of, you know, certain areas that might ex be exposed to, to yes. um, different fluctuations. Well, because you don't want the day, you know, if you wanted, you know, the daily huge ups and downs every day, you know, just look at Bitcoin. I mean, who wants to be involved in that sort yeah. of crazy world yeah. up yeah. and down? We're trying to sort of, you know, smoothen that stuff out, aren't we? And of okay, course. of course, over periods of time, there'll be ups and downs. That's just investing, right? That's just markets. Right? Yeah. <laughs> of course, it happens every day. But you're right. You know, when you say you look at the FTSE one day, it might be up a bit. Next day, down a bit, then back up again. Same with any index in the world. You know this, George, because you do this every day. But you don't, you know, as a client, I mean, I just speak as, a, as an end client, you don't want your money to be up and down, up and down, up and down every day. You want a nice smooth journey to hit that goal, mm -hmm. which might be over, say, five or six or seven years. Mm -hmm. So what, how do we do that then? How, how do you try to smooth out that journey? Because as, as Neil says, a portfolio is made up of all sorts of different assets and, and things from around the world, uh, which move on a daily basis. Yeah. How, how do you smoothen that journey out? Well, what we do is we, we take a long-term view, and when we're saying we're taking a long-term view, it's not a prediction. It's looking at the data set to mm -hmm. say, okay, well, what's the expected return of each of these different asset classes over a period of time? And then what's the relationship between them? So if one of them's expected to do well, what are the areas which could potentially offset the volatility you could yeah. face in that? So, for example, in equities, a higher volatile asset class, and you can offset some of that volatility with assets such as know commodities it could be cash it could even be certain parts of the bond market so that's how we we, we build a portfolio from from its foundations and in terms of how we manage it you know we we are diversified in terms of what we're holding we hold a range of different asset classes mm -hmm. different regions different types of companies and it's it's because you know the market can get quite narrowly focused at certain points in time so if i look this year the s p is doing doing okay um and it's driven by seven stocks you know, mm -hmm. seven stocks have done fifty-three percent, whereas the rest of the index has done eleven percent. That's m that's a really narrow part of the market, and it's all of those stocks which have mentioned artificial intelligence in the recent earnings reports, mm -hmm. which has mm -hmm. been driving this. Those same stocks were absolutely hammered last year when interest rates were rising, yeah. and um, the cost of financing these really fast-growing businesses was gro going up. So, for a client, what we're trying to do is is to manage that exposure to say yes we want that upside participation but we don't want all of the volatility because we've got set mm -hmm. parameters we, mm -hmm. we need to run clients money in yeah. so have we captured some of that upside from those stocks we have you know managers like close brothers have had allocations to that part of the market which have done well as have wavered in and goldman sachs mm -hmm. um as have our own in-house fund range growth aligned but we've also offset that by saying actually i know these stocks are doing well but they're very expensive in terms of what you're paying for these stocks. So let's balance this mm -hmm. out with some companies which are, we believe, are actually trading below their true value. Yeah. So we're looking at their earnings and saying, okay, well, based on this earnings projection, the value should be X and it's currently priced by the market at Y. Mm -hmm. And if you see that gap close and then you get a positive return, but it's also less sensitive to things like rising interest rates. Mm -hmm. And that's important given the interest rate story isn't necessarily over yet mm -hmm. you know we've talked about potentially being near the peak in terms of the us but the uk and the mm -hmm. and europe are still on that, yeah, that yeah, journey yeah. Mm -hmm. um so <coughs> it's, it's about you know saying okay what are the opportunities but also you know focused about what can you expect to receive over the long term and how mm -hmm. much you're paying for these these assets because that, yeah. that that leads into that volatility uh, and, and neil mentioned some of the issues global issues uh, earlier that, that affect markets yeah i mean t to what extent do they you know you think you mentioned in, in some of these uh you know indexes around the world you've got you've got big household name companies that yeah. people, everyone would have heard of and they're solid companies that you know going along quite nicely why, why should a big announcement from you know a, a, a central bank or or, or or whoever it might be like the imf or somebody why why should that 
affect the stock price of, a, of an individual company and therefore people see that in their portfolios. What, what, what's the connection? There's, there's the technical side, which is, you know, how do you value the companies if you've got higher interest rates? So higher interest rates mean it's more expensive for companies to borrow if they're borrowing a lot, if they're quite highly leveraged to, to grow quickly, like a lot of the technology companies which we've seen in the US in recent years. It's, it's more of a challenge because it's saying, OK, well, your earnings were expected to be this and now you've got a higher financing cost to bake in. So let's bring that down and that brings mm -hmm. the valuation down or, or vice versa. Um, it, it's also a sentiment aspect as well. If you've got central bankers talking about, you know, recession, people start preparing for a recession. Um, and then we've had a revision the other way at the UK central bank is saying, actually, I don't think we're going to get a, a recession. So yeah. sentiment can work in both ways. So you've got the, the technical aspect of actually yeah. what does this all mean for the value of investments and then you've got how are investors actually going to mm. respond mm. to to this type of narrative mm. so what we're trying to do in morning markets is you know journalists love all of this type of this all these announcements from central bankers because there's so much they can hook into mm -hmm. and put as a headline mm -hmm. you know these are these are challenging headwinds to contend with higher inflation mm -hmm. higher interest rates yeah what we're trying to do is you know bring a sense of what this actually means yeah. for, for and the just markets. cut through a lot of the daily exactly. well, I was going to yeah. say uh, you know when you talk about journalists uh, that's what spooks clients mm. and that's why we get calls you know when mm -hmm. there's a big headline on yeah. TV or yeah. in the papers but, but I mean, in the UK you know, the, the, the inflation figure comes out every month yes yeah, so and, and the interest rates there, the, there might be an, the, obviously there isn't always a change every month yeah. but it could be because there's a review every month isn't there so and that's just in the UK then you think about what happens in America and their schedule as well mm. so when you look at it over a month, there's a lot of things that can move markets in a month, almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't invest for a daily basis. You invest, well, we always say, for, for the long term. So is it not just best to let a lot of that just wash over you and, and, and remain focused on that long-term goal? Is that is that what you would say to a client? I think so, Peter, yeah. So look, it, it's really useful having the app and, and you can log in every day and, and mm -hmm. see the, the performance. A lot of people have smart watches now. I normally have an app. I've got it on today, uh, which you can use. You have fitness. a very nice watch on so, today. Yeah. Yes, but sometimes we use the smartwatches for fitness, uh, but also you can connect them to, to the media. So, yeah. you know, you, you'll get a, a thing through on your watch and it'll say that the footy's collapsed. Mm. And then, you know, if you're like me, you might go on and check the footy and say it's down by less than 1%. So, you know, you're getting these messages from the media and really it, it's yeah. enticing everyone to, to log in every day and to check every day, which is fine. But really it, it comes back to that long-term view within mm. 10, 15 years, if it's something like a pension, and you, even if you're at retirement, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you live to the average life expectancy in the UK of 85 for a male, that could be a 30-year window, yeah. Yeah. even in retirement where you're invested. So, look, it, it's really important. To, it's great to have that technology, and, and it is important to check the value of investments, but don't get too caught up in the media. You know, the day-to-day. Like, day. The day-to-day, mm -hmm. day, yeah. and you'll see these, these things in the headlines, and if you actually check the facts, you can mm -hmm. see, you know, a loss of less than one yeah. percent isn't a collapse. Well, it's 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 like I always think with the technology. Yes, it's great logging, and I I'm, I log in oh three four times a week. I'm a regular because it's I, I like to see you know just just always like how some of these things are. But what I'm really looking at is how am I doing compared to my goal. Mm -hmm. You know, do I need to make a little fifty pound or hundred pound adjustment? That's what I'm checking. Am I on track? Mm -hmm. Rather than thinking, oh great, I'm up a hundred pound a day or I'm down fifty pound a day. That stuff mm -hmm. it'll correct itself. And you know, I, I just put my trust in you, George, and your team mm -hmm. um, yeah, to sort that out. I'm just thinking, you know, here's my goal. Here's where I am. Am I on track? That's what I'm looking for. And, and you know, the the day to day and the month to month decisions from central bankers. I, I totally agree. If you're a client, you know, focus on on mm -hmm. the goal. For for us and the investment team, these are really important events. So what we're doing is, you know, we're 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 doing our own research and analysis, but we are standing on the shoulders of, as I say, some of the biggest investment houses and research departments in the world. So to cut through that media noise, you know, we speak to specialists and analysts in Europe. Mm -hmm. We speak to them on the ground in, in the States. We're speaking to them, you know, through the course of this week. And we will be certainly through next week um, ahead of the, the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. meeting. And we'll bring a lot of our insight from the yeah. ground uh, to our to our podcast special next week as yeah. well. Yeah. That, that that's important. How do you get past the noise? Well, we're in one of the best seats in the house in terms of the way we build funds mm. and how we work with our managers. We're not buying their product off the shelf. We actually build our products with in partnership with them, which means that you know, as a client, they're desperate to to mm -hmm. to show off what information they've got. What's their added? advantage a ahead of the market in terms of intelligence and yeah. and we take that and we, we, we put that into our view yeah mm -hmm. no i think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point and and you know i've said it before on the podcast but it's worth saying again you need volatility don't you mm -hmm. yeah you need it because if, if markets just consistently went up every day every day whenever your next year impulse save you're always buying into the higher price 
you would be yeah. but that volatility that the up and the down that you find <coughs> that's where you find the opportunity yeah. and there's no way I can time a market because I'm always going to be behind the curve because what's happened has already happened so I can never get in there and, I, and, and that's why we always say don't don't try to time the market it's just being in the market that counts mm -hmm. um, but you, you you and your team need those little ups and downs because that's when you can get in yeah because we're, we're active in what we're doing and what I mean by active is, is it's not a, a computer just buying the index, buying whatever the market's currently positioned at, it's decision takers looking and saying, okay, well, wherever the areas which are undervalued, wherever the areas which are overvalued, where's this? If that's our view, how can we best reflect it in a basket of stocks or bonds or whatever the instrument may be? How can they really focus that view? And that's what that's what our clients are paying for, and that's what we expect our managers to deliver. That's what we hold them to account on. The delivery yeah. of that management. Uh, and tech, yeah. on, that's a good point, Georgia. So Peter, you mentioned people who could impulse save. So we, we might have a lot of clients who are maybe in decumulation phase. So they have retired mm -hmm. and, and they don't have any money left to invest. But what I would say, even to those clients who are experiencing volatility, it's still an opportunity for George and the team to make money and make your money work for you mm -hmm. because they're actively sort of looking at that on a, a weekly, daily basis with the fund managers and, and making changes there. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have money to invest and you, you're a long-term investor with us and, and you've invested your pension funds, etc. There's still opportunity within, within yeah. volatility. And that, that's within that's quite a common question what we get through from clients as well when we're talking about, Luke hit a really good point there about the decumulation phase. We talk about goals. A lot of people think their goal is just up until retirement. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not actually mm -hmm. because that fund has got to last them till they're not here anymore. Um, and it's really important that, you know, when George talks about the management of the funds and the mm -hmm. diversification of managing the risk, mm -hmm. um, that fund lasts them for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And something you've talked about quite a lot is... is you know, not when you are in, in your decumulation phase, is not taking out more than you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that more remains in the markets and can benefit from the work that the investment team do. But just tell us what you mean by that for someone who's thinking, well, what, what, don't, what do you mean don't take more than I need? I mean, yeah, I can take 25%. Are you saying I shouldn't do that or I should or, or what? Well, yeah, I mean, specifically with regards to the tax free cash and a pension, when you, you do come into taking your pension benefits, a lot of people think that they have to take the 25% tax free cash when realistically they don't. The benefits of not taking that full tax-free cash is you've got more of your pension pot because once that tax-free cash comes out, it's very unlikely to go obviously back into the pension mm -hmm. or won't. Um, so have more of the pension, mm -hmm. um, and on a monthly basis as well, we see clients who are maybe taking you know as an example two and a half thousand pounds a month out of their pension or two thousand pounds, and they don't need that, and it's just building up in their bank account. You know you should only have a relatively not small, but an adequate amount of savings for an emergency fund point of view in case anything happens and mm -hmm. you need quick cash. But yeah, the, the benefits of, of, of reviewing it is what we do on an annual basis. So we tend to have an annual review with clients and what that will do is be an annual review on their income mm -hmm. to say, look, what's your income and expenditure? Are you going on holiday this year? You know, how much is that going to cost? And then a lot of people think that, oh, well, I, I think actually this year my state pension is coming in. So I've mm -hmm. got an extra... Ten thousand pounds plus, mm -hmm. so I'll just minimise the amount or take uh, a little bit less out of my pension this year because I don't need it. And then what's that going to do? That's going to allow more funds in the pension to grow, um, and also as well potentially be left to any beneficiaries. Yeah, uh, is this event. a question you get a bit about the the tax free element? Do people? Yeah, there's a bit of confusion around you know if there is uh, how I should maybe take it. And, I think and just to be clear, what 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 are the options? Yeah. I mean, you, so you, if you don't take it all in one go, you can you still get your twenty five percent, but you can spread it over mm -hmm. over a period of time. Look, historically, people always took the tax-free cash when they retired, and yeah. until recently, that's the only way you could do it and potentially take an annuity. With drawdown now, you can take the full 25% out of it if you want. But what's more efficient is if you don't need it, is to take it in tranches, so you could take 5% tax-free cash to, to go on mm -hmm. holiday or whatever. You can then, in working with the advisors, we, we recommend this quite a lot, where you can take income from your pension up to your personal allowance, take that tax-free, and, and you can use tax-free mm -hmm. cash to take the remainder, and you can remain a non-taxpayer for, for the early years of retirement. And what that's doing is it, it's leaving more tax-free cash in the pension, it's leaving more in your pension to grow over the long term, yeah. and it's just meaning that overall you'll pay less tax as well, so yeah. it's, a, it's a good way to do it all the way around. And you presumably speak to an advisor would be the... Correct. This, this, this is where you come in, your, this is where you earn your money, isn't yeah, it? Of course I'd it is. I'd say 30-40% yeah. of our calls uh, yeah. that we get through on a weekly basis are about income and drawdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clients wanting to understand um, how to minimise as much tax as what Luke's just said on their income payments. Um, a very common theory what we get on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, Neil mentioned earlier on about the diversification factor, and, the, and obviously, you know, if you're in a, say, the aggressive portfolio, or you're in the the, the, the balanced portfolio, that that'll be a different makeup. And and, and we, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about 
if you're trying to sort of chase performance a bit and chase, chase a sort of an outcome, and, and as we said earlier, we, we leave that to you. But just tell us about some of the different instruments. So like the balanced portfolio, you know, or the, or the aggressive or the growth one. How, how would the composition of those change? So a client who might be in balanced and another client watching who might be in, in aggressive, what would be the difference between those two portfolios, George? So if I took a balanced portfolio, we've got about 55% of that in equities. So equities are company stocks and shares, and they're spread across the US, Europe, Asia, Japan, um, UK, all different types of companies of different size, different sector. Um, so we're diversified in the sense that if there's one particular sector which is challenged, then we've got plenty of others to, to offset that and uh, provide the opportunity. We've got about 30% in bonds. So a bond is essentially debt, which is, which can be issued by the government or a company. Um, so we hold both, again, across a range of different regions, different maturities, different types of companies. Um, bond aspect is an area of the market which was challenged last year because it's more sensitive to interest rates with interest rates going up um it 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 was it was a, a tougher environment for bonds but it's also provided one of the best opportunity sets which we've seen in 20 years so hence what we did with our portfolios is we took the bond exposure down when interest rates were going up mm -hmm. and then when we felt we were getting closer towards the top and you know the valuation of them was much better the yield which you were buying the bonds on was much better we, we, we got back in and we did that quite aggressively and we've been rewarded for that. The other sort of 10% allocations made up of things like alternatives. So an alternative is, you know, we talk about diversification and history will say, okay, well, diversified portfolios, equities and bonds. Well, take last year as your example, both of those areas were challenged. So what can we do as a multi-asset manager? We use instruments like alternatives. Alternatives are quite broad, but what it essentially allows you to do is have much more flexibility in the way you invest. So you can go longer market, you can go shorter market, you can use commodities, you could use infrastructure. So all these areas which are have a much different or a much lower sensitivity to the equity in the bond market, and last year generated for us a positive return. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got cash in there as well. You know, cash have got quite interesting um, interest rates on them in themselves at this <coughs> point in time. And from a volatility management perspective, it's your typically your lowest lo lowest level of volatility as an instrument which you've yeah. got. So we use all of these different instruments that you know they'll have different expected returns, mm -hmm. but they'll have different risks and they'll have a different relationship with one another. So we build our portfolios in that way. And if you were to dial that up for an aggressive client, well, ultimately your asset class with the highest expected return over the long term is equity. So you would expect to find sort of ninety percent plus of, of equity in content that, yeah. in that, that type of portfolio. It's interesting you say that, you know, people might not realise, but I mean they can go on the app and they can find this out because it's all in there. But you know, the cash would make up part of their could make up part yeah, of their, yeah. their portfolio. Yeah. And, and and that's what you mean, you know, you, that, that composition. You've got lots of stuff going on there, but all with this idea of helping a client reach their goal. Yeah. If you're not invested and you're just putting all your money in, literally in cash in the bank, yeah. you're, you're a sitting duck, aren't you? Because, yes, you might be getting a couple of percent more now than you were a few years ago, but inflation's eroding that easily. So, yeah. you know, so you know, you've, you're re if you're in cash in the bank, you, you might feel safe, but actually you've, you're just in one in one thing yeah exactly so if you were to compare say you know cash rates are really interesting at this point in time mm -hmm. you know you can get three and a half even four percent if you really pushed it mm -hmm. in a cash rate for hard to find but you know that that's sort of where guilt are at this point in time and th that's your income but no capital return so our sort of income portfolio is an example of you know a portfolio which does pay out a regular monthly income yeah. you know you're getting a yield which is comparable to that we're getting a yield which is higher than the uk equity market and then if i look on an annualized basis since we launched to the end of may um you know the return after after charges is about 4.4 percent on an average annual basis that's the bit you would sort of miss out with, with yeah. on a cash mm -hmm. portfolio so we're still giving you the income but um you know you've got you've got you've got capital return mm -hmm. in there as well yeah it's important for a lot of the points yeah. Luke mentioned in I terms mean, of you know, a common question is that cash oh. rates are, are higher now than they were yes why not why not just put everything in cash and it brings about what you were seeing there Peter but also George you know interest rates could change in the future and if you yeah. look at the data with what's happening with inflation yeah it's likely that interest rates could change maybe yes yeah, so you've got UK inflation under nine and it's sort of the Bank of England are expecting it to be sort of five by the end of the year and then back to sort of two percent by the end of next year so they're not going to hold interest rates overly high for, for too long. Mm -hmm. Probably going to hold them where they are for this year, but yeah. the next year, 
you know you could start to see rates coming down and that that's going to feed to what you're seeing on market mm-hmm. cash rates and that's and that's typically a conversation about a medium to long term goal yeah mm-hmm. that we have with yeah. clients yeah yeah, yeah. And you know the, the sort of if a comparator in a in a portfolio, you know you've got cash rates four percent, yeah, but we're also buying, you know, investment grade bonds, which are you know the highest quality investment grade bonds of companies which have got very strong balance sheets, mm. on yields of sort of north of six percent, even seven percent mm. in some cases. So you know you, you know, I, the the competition bar is high for cash, but but we've got tools and resources to 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 challenge that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, comes back to trying to time the market. Look, obviously, cash is the interest rates are higher at the minute. Those will probably reduce next year. But also, even if you're in a decumulation phase, this is it's a long term investment. It's really important to remember that we're not trying to switch and and make money over a month, Mm -hmm. a week, or or even a year. It's all about maintaining that long five, ten, fifteen year period where Mm -hmm. overall we would expect equities to to overperform and tackle inflation. Look, inflation has been really high, and that's the aim here is to to try and get gains in excess of inflation to make your money work for you. Make sure that you're not being selling cash to, to a rate that could be eroded over the long term by inflation. Yeah, totally. Right. So, how can people get in touch with you then if they want to? You said you're getting lots of calls and lots of things each week, and you've got tens of thousands of, of clients. So some people have obviously worked out to get in touch with you. But anyone who hasn't and wants to, what's the best way, Neil? Are you going to give your mobile number out? <laughs> well, actually, we we hit the nail on the head really there, Peter, because we do have a new development coming out with the with the diary system. Um, it's not launched yet via the app, but it will be in the next couple of weeks. Um, so soon, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we will be able to, the client will be able to log on to their app. Yeah. Uh, have a look at your diary. Have a look at the diary, yeah, or my diary. Book an appointment um, and get confirmation automatically back. Um, at this moment, it's the typical number um, or email to customer care, um, which will get um, put them in touch with a customer care agent mm-hmm. who will check an advisor's diary and then just pop it in. Mm-hmm. Very good. Any other ways they can get? How how what's the most common way people reach and get into? I think it's probably the, the phone line is yeah. the most common way. You know that yeah. that's answered fairly quickly as well. I think less than two minutes you can get through to a, a client manager who can yeah. book you an appointment with an advisor. I think you can send a secure message as well. Message, yeah. You can send yes. you can log onto your app and send a secure message. And, and we've got live chat as well. Live chat, video mm-hmm. chat. There's many yeah. different ways. We've got the technology for all sources, not yes. just a phone call these days. Yeah. yeah, I can feel my watch vibrating as you're speaking. Well, now someone's <laughs> reading me, see, straight away, real time. I, I, thought thought you were just, I thought you were just hurrying me up. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's a good point. My coffee has gone cold, so we probably better should wrap up there. Um, one final thing then. So, so we've talked about a lot today and with some of the questions people are sending us in and things you're hearing on the phone and what have you. Um, what would be your number one right now, given where we are and, and the volatility that, that's out there that we know about and that we hear about all the time? Uh, on the news and things like this, what would be your um, just number one, uh, say, tip to, to someone who was maybe thinking about giving us a call today? What would you say? Um, think about your investment journey. Think about what you what you want. Think about your goal. If your goal is retirement and you're 40, um, then think of the long term. Um, try not to panic around things that you see on TV. Yeah, um, and which are you, designed to make you have a reaction. Yeah, of course. Reaction. Um, I mean, I'm like you, you know, I... I because I, I Neil, you're nothing like me. Because <laughs> I tar me with that. Because I, I work for the company, I check my app every day, um, you know, to see like fluctuations in investment. But you know, a message maybe is to clients who are jittery about, you know, ups and downs and slight variations. Like Luke said, it may be only like half a percent or one yeah. percent. Yeah. Don't check your app every day. Check yeah. it every week. Right. Um, you know, and if you have any questions, get in touch. Here to copy off Neil, but yeah, I would agree. Don't get sucked in by the media too much uh, with, with the negative news stories. Look, we're all invested for different reasons, but we're all trying to, to make money. Yeah. We've all got different goals, but but it's important to remember that long term. Mm-hmm. You know, things are strange at the minute with interest rates and inflation, but you know, there's, there's signs that that could be short term and, mm-hmm. and that could change. Yeah. So it's important to remain long term invested. Don't panic. And obviously just remember your long term goals and see it as a, a 10, 15, 20 year period where we're going to try and make money on your investments. Stay in your seat. Yes. Yeah, I would I would echo those points. I think you know what we try and do is encourage clients to write down what their goal is. You know, really think about it and visualize it and set the time horizon on that. And then, you know, stay informed, but through the right sources. So what what we try and offer is an unbiased approach to deliver and updates on on the markets and also, you know, <clears throat> not our reaction, our response in terms of what we're going to do on a forward looking forward looking basis for clients. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's not just us here. At head office, as I say, we've got people working all around the world each day on on our investments, and 
you know, as a market, as an industry, we're all facing the same sort of challenges. And, you know, if I look at how we're delivering this, you know, our competitors and so on, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're battling through this mm-hmm. um, well. And, and I think, you know, the road ahead for, for, for clients is a lot of opportunity mm-hmm. for us to capture out there. What we've been yeah. in, in terms of, you know, the interest rate hiking cycle, the inflation cycle, that's not normal. And how do you know it's not normal? Because it's nowhere near where the Bank of England or banks around the world are setting their mm-hmm. their targets and their their resolute in terms of getting us back to mm-hmm. back to that target. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, our, our approach is factoring that that in. Mm-hmm. But we'll, as I say, we're very alert to to what's happening in yeah. the meantime. Well, it's, it's like we said at the start. There's a reason why one in every five financial advisors chooses to work with True Potential. And the, an- the answer is, we've been doing this a long time. We know what we're doing. And, you know, we have we, we, we hire the best in the business, and, and that's why... I would just say as here. well, just with regards to what we're doing now, there is a lot of content on the app. Um, yes. So, you know, the, the morning video. Well, let's just give that a plug. Morning Markets, if you want to yep. cut through the mainstream media and, and the hyperbole that comes with that, it's a quick couple of minutes every morning. We'll tell you exactly what's going on in the markets and and give you that reassurance and, and we'll just cut right through all of that yeah. uh, noise and everything else and tell yeah, you and absolutely. people can get that on this channel on YouTube they can log in yeah. or just go on to the YouTube or, or it's within the app as well you're right Neil people can see it there and well uh, there's, there's, there's more people everyone. watching it because we had our record view uh, on YouTube a couple of weeks yeah. ago were you on that one? I was yeah no, I wondered I why you might have mentioned that one yeah. Yeah. Exactly. and it, it, it seems to be you know providing clients with the reassurance that they need in the sense that when you've had certain events in markets whether it was you know the, the the banks in the US, the regional banks, didn't necessarily see a massive uptick in mm. terms of client calls, but you did see an uptick in terms of the views on, on the videos on on the days. So mm-hmm. clients log in, see an event on the news, and there's a video mm-hmm. providing them with some some context yeah. as to what's going yeah. on there. And yeah. Um, yeah, you know we're pleased that, you know that whether you use them or not, the information's there. You know we mm. we never forget who's at at the end of each of each of our investment units. Yeah, every pound. We appreciate there's a client at the end of it who's worked hard for that pound and uh, mm-hmm. and we respect that and we want to provide the information for, for all clients to make yeah. the mm-hmm. right decisions. Well said. Right, so you're off to see Fender tonight? Yeah. Well, can anyone beat, is it even worth asking, can anyone beat that this weekend for anything? No. I'm going on Saturday night. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. You can match it. Well, right. I've had a, a very boring weekend, nothing planned for me, so no. I mean, I'm sure Neil will send me some photos of him meeting Sam Fender. <laughs> meeting yeah. Sam Fender? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> someone I know is meeting Sam Fender, oh, but, right. you know, oh. we might get an invite off of him. Well, you never know, you might, you might get a photograph or something like that later. Good, all right, well then, well, enjoy yourself. Are you going to be sitting along? No, I'll just be like, you know, <laughs> on me app, you know, checking <laughs> my balance and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might do, yeah. I'll have a pain in my hand. Good, all right, and, and you're up in the other hand. Yeah. Um... Good. Well, I hope that's been useful today. Uh, some of the questions that you've been sending in, and you've had some of the the answers and the feedback from from the guys here uh, on on what what it all means. And uh, you know, as we say, we're, we're never shy away. That's why we do these podcasts and we do morning markets. We love to hear from you. So, if you've got any questions or you've got any thoughts or you just want to, um, you know, share some thoughts with us, um, doesn't have to always be a question. Please do get in touch. Neil told you the ways you can do that before. You can put the comments in the comments box on this video as well. Uh, while you're doing that, don't, for hit, don't forget to hit subscribe and give us a like if you haven't already, because that helps us and we love that as well. So please do forget, uh, don't forget to do that. Enjoy your weekends, whether you're going to see Fender or someone else, just enjoy what you're doing. And don't forget to tune in next week to the True Potential Do More With Your Money podcast, and we will see you then. Bye. <laughs>